all. Members, we are moving to file item 34. That's AB 67. The clerk will read. Assembly Bill 67 by Assembly Member Gonzalez and others in Act to Employment. Ms. Gonzalez, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, this morning a number of you, I'm sorry not all of you, received a pumpkin pie in your office. That's all we could get from bakers in, in Sacramento or 54. If you didn't get one, I promise you one in the future. But I wanted to do is in July, or June rather, remind you of that Thanksgiving dinner. Those times when you stay home with your family, having family time, enjoying a good dinner, probably some pumpkin pie. And as we've seen throughout the few years, retail establishments more and more deciding that's a time that should be opened up for shopping. Current California law allows employers to mandate working scheduled overtime and holidays. But members, I was surprised members, to learn. Members on the floor and staff in the back, please keep your conversations to a minimum. Ms. Gonzalez, you may continue. But I was surprised to learn, as many of you may have been, that there is nothing in our law that compensates for holiday pay. Yes, overtime, but no holiday pay. The way I learned this was a few years ago, I talked to a woman who was working her Thanksgiving. Her name was Karen. She had three young boys at home under the age of 14. And I asked her, I said, well, are you at least getting a few more dollars working on Thanksgiving? I asked this because I grew up with my own mother going to work on Thanksgiving. Often she was a nurse. And we always knew, as devastating as it was to have my mother gone, that that would be the way we would have a Christmas because she would earn just a little extra pay. And Karen looked at me and she said, no, I don't get extra pay. I simply get to keep my job. That's a devastating thought. I simply get to keep my job. I said, well, when do you eat dinner with your kids? And she says, we try to have a turkey breakfast tomorrow morning. Workers and their families have resorted to petitions and other public pleas for a chance at some holiday togetherness when facing the sort of inflexible forced scheduling. I know as I started talking about this, I got an email from a woman in my district. Her name was Maria, and she said that this year, this year, her mother would have to leave at 6 a.m. because Kmart decided that people may want to shop at that time. And she was told that she wasn't sure what time she would be let go to go home. No advanced schedule, no notice, minimum wage. I think we can do better. We can't legislate family togetherness, and when we started looking at laws that could possibly even address this, all we found were three states in the Northeast that actually doesn't allow people to open up. Knowing that wouldn't work in California, we are, are searching for the first of its kind, ensuring that at the very least, if a major retailer or Fortune 500 companies have done the work to ensure and know that they're going to make a whole lot of money by opening up on Thanksgiving, that at least a little piece of that can go to the workers who have to leave their family in order to keep their job. This simply says, because of all the discussions I've had with all of you, the discussions with my colleague from San Fernando Valley here who convinced me to take Christmas out of this, it's only on Thanksgiving, my discussions that I had with my colleague from El Centro, from Los Angeles, to ensure that this doesn't affect small businesses, it's only tied to the ACA definition of small businesses, which mean a hundred workers or over. The discussions I've had with my colleagues from Northern California about ensuring as we move this to the Senate, that this does not include necessary personnel, people who would have to work, establishments that can't close, hospitals and hotels. I'm willing to work with anyone who wants to help define this new law to ensure that we are really just getting after this new consumerism that has caused so many people to have to go to work. But in the meantime, to move this forward, I need your I vote. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. Mr. Kansen Chu, you are recognized. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in support of AB 67. Thanksgiving is the easiest and the most 
popular time for working Americans and working families to coordinate visit and vacations. It is known to be the busiest traveling day uh, uh, of the year in the United States. Whether you are a first generation immigrant like myself, or your family sail here with uh, Mr. Columbus, Thanksgiving is the time for family gathering. Businesses that are open on Thanksgiving should know that they will be making more money. So uh, if they don't, they shouldn't be in that business. So some of the, those profits should trickle down to the employees, which in turn will put more money back into our local economy. Members, I as respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Chu. Mr. Harper, you are recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this bill is yet another overreach of government into the business, of business affairs of Californians. Honestly, this bill seeks to gobble up the bottom line of so many businesses. This should be a decision between employee and employer, not another mandate from the state of California. I would urge my colleagues to vote against this turkey of a bill. Mr. Bonta, you are recognized from your desk. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I rise in support of AB 67. The typical minimum wage worker on a holiday is not a high school student earning weekend pocket money. In fact, 88% of those who would benefit from holiday pay are age 20 or older, and 55% are women. This bill would create a formal acknowledgement of the employer's efforts to support the success of their employees and businesses and as an important demonstration of valuing of their workers. I know paying double for Thanksgiving will be an adjustment for some businesses, but the result will be a bigger, more sustainable, and inclusive economy for California. Many businesses will actually benefit from the increased holiday compensation as it should give a small boost to each of our local economies. I urge an I vote, members. Thank you, Mr. Bonta. Mr. Wood, you are recognized. Thank you, Speaker and members. I rise in support of this. Uh, personally, for me, Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday of the year. It's a time where I get my family together. We enjoy good food. We enjoy each other's company. And in my world, we actually enjoy some wine. Um, and, you know, for me, we've been hearing, I've been hearing from lots of people in, in the business community about the, how they value their workers, how they want it, that a happy workforce is better for the bottom line, that it's better for customers, it's better for customer service. In this case, I would love if they would just voluntarily do this, quite frankly. Show your value for your workers. Give them the pay. There's the only reason retailers would be open on Thanksgiving Day would be a huge profit incentive. So share that profit with your workers. Make them happier. Make them, uh, make them more... Uh, <laughs> make them happier. There's an aha moment for you. So anyway, thank you. Mr. Hernandez, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, I rise in strong support of this important piece of legislation. What we're seeing in California is the same thing we're seeing across the nation. We're seeing a degradation of the middle class. We all know that. We see the numbers. Economists report to that to us consistently. And part of that has to do when we allow greed-driven corporations to continue to divide us, divide our households, divide our communities. Uh, Thanksgiving is a time for family. It's a time where we come together, and it's, not, and it's not exclusive to one community, to one ethnicity. It's a holiday for all of us. It's one we celebrate with our families. We all say that to each other when we're here at work, in the elevator, in the hallways. The best part of the holiday is being able to spend time with our loved ones, with our family members. That's what we love about it. It's been said here on the floor today that this is a decision that's made between employee and employers, but I would respectfully disagree. When employees feel that if they don't participate or work on, the, on this holiday, that they lose their job, they're under the threat of losing the ability to have sustainability on some level for their families. I personally have experienced families not in recent years, family members departing from the Thanksgiving Day celebration because they have to go to work. Not because they'd like to go to work, but because they have to go to work. And this is something that is... This is, a, this is a scenario that's happening. Why? Because it's profitable for businesses, big box retailers to stay open. The author, Ms. Gonzalez, 
the representative from San Diego, has been thoughtful. She's worked with the opposition and, re and reducing and narrowing the scope. She's been asked by some to remove the Christmas holidays. She's done that. She's been asked to remove small business. She's done that. She's been asked to remove the emergency services community, hospitals. She's done that. Every step of the way, she's fighting to keep, give us the opportunity to keep our families together on such an important holiday, one we all enjoy. Let's say this to our Californians. I know when we all run and ask members of, of the community to support us, we don't ask... We don't ask voters, send me to Sacramento so that I can allow corporations to keep us further away from you and to degrade our quality of life. We don't say that to our voters. We say, send us to Sacramento so that we can improve your quality of life, so we can keep our families together, so we can improve our circumstance. That's what this bill is about. Let's not degrade our holiday time, our family time. This is a small consideration for those that are working when we're enjoying our family togetherness. I strongly ask for your I vote. Ms. Benia, you are recognized from your desk. I, I support this bill, and I, I just encourage all of you who believe in family values to um, consider supporting this bill. That's really what it's about. Uh, this is the one holiday in the year, really, given to families uh, to get together. And there's nothing in this bill that's saying that our uh, large businesses can't continue to do what they're doing, even if we don't like it. Um, but it does strengthen the ability of the family to stay together. It does make a statement that we value this time of being able to get together as families and resist the force of this hyper-commercialism that has taken over. And I'm sure you've all seen it. You've watched the news stories. Uh, you've seen what's uh, kind of taking over uh, the priority and the value of family. And so this is a, 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 a small gesture, I believe, uh, that pushes back, that says... Um, you know, if this is the way it has to be, there should be recognition of the sacrifice of having to leave your family in order to go into the workplace. I think it's a good bill. I encourage your support of it. Uh, and uh, hopefully on this coming Thanksgiving, we'll see uh, a pushback on really what I think is taking over something very precious to each of us. I ask for your I vote. Mr. Wagner, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in, in opposition and want to take a moment to point out what I think is the economic illiteracy at the heart of this bill. Um, we hear from the supporters, um, for example, from our, our good colleague from uh, San Jose, that um, if, you, if you can't afford this little increase, well, you shouldn't be in business anyway, uh, to, to paraphrase that, that comment. There's, there's really a, an arrogance there. If you can't afford this bill, it might in fact be because of the daily, the relentless, the bill after bill after bill, the drip after drip after drip of regulation that comes out of this house that makes it harder for you to hire people. It makes it harder for you to pay them. It makes it harder for you to earn a profit and actually stay in business. Um, that may be why you can't afford uh, this increase. We, we hear from our friend from Healdsburg, just make them happier. If you're open that day, you're going to make, quote, lots of profit. You don't know that. What we do know is that many of our re retailers only start turning a profit towards the end of the year when we get into the holiday season. Um, it's not that easy in this environment to turn a profit, and it's not so easy that we can just say, pay them more, though we seem to be doing that. Um, it would be great to be able to make them happier. You know, we hear the, uh, the author has made the bill better, and she has, taking out Christmas, making many, many other changes. Well, take out Thanksgiving, and you might actually have something with this bill, because then we wouldn't be piling on to our employers and making it harder and harder, relentlessly so, ratcheting up the cost of employment. Do that, and you might actually have a good bill here. As it stands, it's economically illiterate and, frankly, ought be opposed. Mr. Allen, you are recognized. Thank you very much. I also rise in, in strong opposition to AB 67. AB 67 may seem like a very simple bill. Let's just pay people, you know, double time on one day of the year when they should be with their families anyway. 
Mr. Speaker, if I could have some silence on the floor. Members, please take your conversations off the floor. And a reminder for folks in the back of the chambers to keep your conversations to a minimum. We have business before us. We're trying to wrap up this afternoon. Mr. Allen, you may continue. Great. I appreciate the efforts of the author to limit the scope of the bill. The problem is the very premise is flawed. It turns out that uh, my colleague from Orange County is completely correct, as he oftentimes is. Basic economics tells you very simply, if, if the cost of your inputs is higher, you may have less to output. If we have to raise the pay of all of our employees, even on one day of the year, businesses might consider hiring less employees. And the effect in aggregate is actually the exact opposite of what we're trying to do. The effect that, that we're trying to reach here is we're trying to pay our workers more. We're trying to give our workers more time with their families. These are laudable goals. However, the problem is, is that when we mandate in union-style rules on our private industries that our employers must begin paying their employees more, we begin to erode the very base that is employing these people in the first place. And I will remind you, nothing gives you more time with your families than having the ability to be financially secure, to have that job. It was mentioned earlier, this will be my last point, it was mentioned earlier that um, the author was appalled when she spoke to a worker uh, who said, look, I'm just trying to, I have to work on Thanksgiving because I want to keep my job. I'm not appalled by that statement at all. As a matter of fact, I'm gratified by that. You see, I believe that hard work is a good thing. I think this country was built upon hard work and the fact that people are willing to make sacrifices to do the hard work necessary to keep themselves employed, to keep this country running, to keep their families fed, I think this is a wonderful thing. This is what, exactly what our country is founded upon. So that while this may seem like a simple fairness bill, this bill could have many unintended consequences. This bill could reduce our shopping in brick and mortar, drive more people to the internet, cause less overall employment, further increase our poverty rate, and have the exact opposite effect on employment that so many members on both sides of the aisle have clearly stated that they desire. Thank you, Arjun Novo. All debate having ceased. Ms. Gonzalez, you may close. I, I just want to address some of the opposition because I want to be clear about what we're doing here. This is retail establishments with over 100 workers. This is Walmart and Kmart. I don't think they're going to close down and leave the state and cause poverty if on one day of the year they have to pay their workers a little bit more. In fact, I know they won't. We're talking about Fortune 500 companies, Sears and JCPenney. We're talking about companies who every day of the year make enormous profits. And, and, and decided because of the number of uh, the amount of profits they can make one more day a year that they're going to open that up and force people to come in. And I want to tell you one more story because this is the one that just shocked me. We had a woman named Julie, and she's from the Bay Area. She came and testified in front of labor, and she said, "I just want to be clear in why I need the extra pay. On Thanksgiving, buses don't run; they don't run the same schedule, and that's how I get to work." She said, so on Thanksgiving, not because I think I might lose my job, because I was told if I don't show up, I will lose my job. I had to get a cab to and from work. I had to pay to work and be away from my family on Thanksgiving. Members, Julie doesn't have a lobbyist waiting outside the gate. She doesn't have a chamber of commerce to call you up in your office. She doesn't even have a union. And thank God at least we have unions to support a measure like this. We are her lobbyists. We are the ones who can stand up and say, people like Julie, people like Mary and Karen with three kids, no, it's not okay to say at least I didn't lose my job on Thanksgiving. These are people who work hard 365 days a year on one day, that one sacred family day. It's time we give them a little bit more. I respectfully ask for an I vote. With that, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote.
All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. <clears throat> All members vote or desire to vote. Ms. Gonzalez, what's your pleasure? Ms. Gonzalez moves the call. Members, I'm prepared to lift the call on AB, pardon me, file item 30, that's AB 575, Mr. O'Donnell's measure, clerk will post. All members vote or desire to vote, all members vote or desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the vote. I close the roll and tally the vote with 41 votes. Okay. Members, 40 votes. Lift the call again. I didn't announce. I, I, was, I was indicating. Members, I'm prepared to lift the call again on file item 30. That's AB 575. Clerk will post. Clerk will close the roll and tie the vote. Ayes 41, noes 29. Measure passes. Okay, members, we are going to move to file item 21. That's AB 356. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 356 by Assemblymember Williams and others in acting relating to oil and gas. Mr. Williams. Members, thank you for uh, hanging in there on a long afternoon. 
A 2011 U.S. EPA audit of Dogger indicated that Dogger was doing an insufficient job protecting California's groundwater. Then, even after that audit, in June of last year, it was discovered that Dogger was approving injection wells in non-exempt aquifers, meaning aquifers that could be used for drinking water or ag water or other beneficial use. To date, the state has shut down 23 injection wells because they were, are, had already been injecting into aquifers that would be suitable for drinking water. Just yesterday, the governor and oil companies were sued by Central Valley farmers for allowing oil and gas wastewater to destroy thousands of cherry trees. This bill would reform the underground injection control program to protect groundwater and ensure compliance with state and federal laws. It does show by ensuring that aquifer exemptions are thoroughly vetted by the State Water Resources Control Board to protect more aquifers from being contaminated. This bill also requires groundwater monitoring to verify that wastewater and injection fluid will not pollute nearby aquifers with a beneficial use. As California deals with the fourth year of drought conditions, protecting groundwater has become more important than ever. It's why both my counties and ACWA, yes, ACWA, not exactly, ACWA, yes, ACWA, not exactly the most liberal organization in the world, support this bill because four years into a drought, we cannot afford to allow underground injection projects to harm groundwater that is usable groundwater. I ask for your eye vote. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Seeing no discussion or debate on this item, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. 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 All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Close the roll. Tally the vote. Eyes 26, nose 31. Measure fails. Reconsideration. Mr. Williams notices reconsideration. Madam Speaker, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I recognize that we're not quite done. We've got a little bit more work to do. Uh, but I wanted to take the chance today 
to say to you and the members on the floor that we've passed one of the three big milestones of the legislative session, our House of Origin deadline. Next will be the budget and then the end of session, and it'll be before us before we know it. It'll be upon us before uh, we can even believe that it has come. So I wanted to take a minute uh, at this particular milestone to say thank you all for your hard work here on the floor and in your committees, because it took a lot for uh, all of these bills to get here today for us to give this consideration, uh, in particular this week. I especially want to thank our desk staff and the floor teams from both sides of the aisle for making this busy week run so smoothly. And of course, the folks at Ledge Council, our sergeants and our special services, without whom we wouldn't have tackled all these bills and had the information we needed before us every day as we got started. We got a lot done and we did a lot of good. So members, I hope you have a great weekend. Once we're done, you get to go home tonight. Uh, Republicans, relax, eat, drink, eat a lot, drink a lot. Democrats, return to your practicing and your running and your fielding. But uh, have a great weekend, everybody, and thank you. But we're not done. We're not done. But I want to make sure you get the thanks before we all decide we need to run out of here. So thank you. Members, very briefly, while I have your attention, Assemblymember Lowe's birthday is tomorrow. Let's wish Mr. Lowe a happy birthday. <laughs> Members, I'm prepared to lift the call on file item 34, that's AB. 67. The clerk will post. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll, tally the vote. Ayes 29, noes 28. Eight. Measure fails. Notice reconsideration. Ms. Gonzalez notices reconsideration. Members, the session schedule is as follows. Friday, June 5th, no floor session, no check-in session. Monday, June 8th, floor session at noon. All other items remaining will be passed and retained. All motions shall be continued. Seeing and hearing no further business, I am ready to entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Holden moves, Ms. Waldron seconds that this House stands adjourned until Monday, June 8th at noon. Quorum call is lifted.